everyone, I'm Carolyn from the Lantern of Chagrin Valley Assisted Living and welcome to Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. This is a weekly Facebook Live program that is created to offer resources, tips, ideas for the person who is a caregiver. So you can be a caregiver at home or a caregiver to someone who is perhaps in a community like ours. I'm joined by our Lantern of Madison and Lantern of Saybrook Assisted Living Communities who also offer weekly Facebook Live programs. So we we'll hope you will uh, tune in and you can get information about all of our programs and all of our communities on the Lantern Lifestyle website. So tonight our topic is developing a prescription for activity and engagement. And just like we have prescriptions for medication, we also have prescriptions for uh, activity programming. In fact, there are some psychologists that actually have uh, developed this concept maybe I'm going to say as long as 10 years ago across the United States and they're of the belief that uh, in interventions such as different types of activities can be just as beneficial to us as uh, medication so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm sure that you will uh, agree with me that we all have a sense of security and predictability every day based on routines. So the little child and going to bed at night, we develop those routines of I get the drink of water, I get my teeth brushed, put my jammies on, I get the story read to me, and a couple little minutes of snuggles and what have you, turn the lights down, and then it's time for bed. And our body begins to develop a muscle memory or a behavior memory and helps us have that same pattern of gently falling asleep every night. Well, each of us has our own personalities. We have our own likes and dislikes in terms of hobbies, interests, abilities, and different levels of uh, cognitive awareness, ability, memory loss. So we're gonna take a look at how we can incorporate those into developing a prescription for activity and engagement. Well, think of that prescription like a calendar, like a schedule. And that means that what you can do is literally take a calendar especially one that has a different page for each day, or you can take just pieces of paper Sunday through Saturday and develop a schedule for the week. So at the left hand side of the page, if you will, put time slots from early morning till early evening. Now we all wake up at different times. So your early morning slots, your schedule may start at five, six, seven. And for some people, they don't wake up until seven or eight or nine. So that's your, your time to know for yourself what your patterns are, what your schedules, and what will work for you. So we're gonna take a look at that schedule, and our goal then will be to start in the morning. So if the morning for you is an early day, because maybe this individual you're caring for was an early morning worker, then typically we're gonna get up in the morning. The first thing we usually do is have some bathroom time. And then after that, we may have different uh, behaviors and patterns. Some of us may jump right out of bed. We just wanna greet that day. Others have to have a few cups of coffee. They have to have a few extra pushes of the snooze uh, button, if you will, and wake up more slowly. So my husband and I, for instance, are very different in that respect. He's early and I'm a little bit later. So one of the things that we can do then is start with that morning routine. So it may start with, let's say we're gonna pick eight o'clock just for the sake of an example here. The person's gonna get out of bed and in that eight to nine a.m. slot, that perhaps is your time to discern, are you gonna do uh, washing face, brushing teeth, those kinds of grooming tasks before breakfast or after breakfast? Do you get dressed before breakfast or after breakfast? What is the pattern of your behavior there? So that's what we're gonna take a look at there. So let's say we're starting at eight o'clock. We're gonna give ourselves maybe a half hour to an hour to get through those morning routines. And those are the times, let's say I'm helping someone get dressed. I might not want to say, what are you gonna to wear today? What would you like to wear today? I might say, would you like to wear your green blouse or your blue blouse? So I'm giving choices, I'm having involvement, but I'm not overwhelming the person. Instead of asking, what would you like for breakfast? I may simply prepare a breakfast, something I know they like, something they will eat, and something that's nutritious. So as much as you can, you wanna serve uh, real fruit, whole fruit, you wanna serve whole grains. You want things that help with digestion. You want to have uh, foods in their natural state because that also aids along with digestion in hydration, which we've talked about in a previous program, and it helps us be regular in terms of the bathroom habits that we were talking about. So uh, 
in that first uh, time slot when we're actually preparing breakfast, can the person that we're caring for help with breakfast? Can they set the table? Are there any foods that they can help prepare, like perhaps uh, cold cereals, that kind of thing? Can they help clear the table? Can they help wipe something? Uh, depending on that level of physical ability and cognitive awareness, we want the person to be as involved as they can in the normal tasks of the day. So the first hour of the day may be more related to morning routine and breakfast. Now for myself, when I see the uh, sun coming up in the morning, I know it's morning. I see the sun coming up. When I smell uh, bacon in the morning, I know that my husband is making breakfast, so it's time to come into the, the dining area. So again, all these things may just be clues to us to the predictability of the schedule of our day. So if we think about those next you know, patterns for the day, the next time of the day may be um, early morning. So we've already had our breakfast. The first thing we wanna do is get some movement, get some muscle movement, get some engagement. That could take the form of going outside for a walk, going to get the newspaper out of the mailbox, taking the dog for a walk, it could be um, having something involved with physical activity inside the home. Maybe you're going to uh, have a uh, some level of exercise, chair exercise, chair yoga, watching an exercise video. We have some couples here that until very recently were still going to the rec center and going for a walk. Perhaps they were mall rockers. Uh, so you want to, again, incorporate as much physical movement. If you're an outdoor person, take advantage of spring, summer, and fall and be outdoors as much as you can. If you like gardening, use that time of the morning when it's a little bit cooler to have some physical movement like pulling weeds, breaking grass, uh, those kinds of things uh, to give you, again, opportunities for getting those muscles a little bit more limber and ready to continue throughout the day. So you want to keep our activities uh, in these time slots that I'm thinking about on your calendar and on your schedule to about 30, 45, or 60 minutes. So people that have more physical ability may enjoy the physical activity longer. People that are extroverts may want to be outside longer. They may want to engage with others longer. People that don't like to be outside, people that are introverts will be more comfortable inside. So you're going to be the uh, gatekeeper, if you will, of knowledge and be able to make that work for you. So around mid-morning, so now we've gone from getting up maybe eight to nine, nine to 10, we're doing some movement, we're getting involved in uh, some physical activity. And here at the Lantern, actually, we have a program called Jive that we do every day. It's our own program of uh, physical exercise. So that's every day or later in the morning. Around mid-morning, this is a time that you may choose activities that are more work focused. So these are things that if someone was a homemaker, it might include uh, tasks that were uh, comfortable to them in those homemaking years. It could be polishing the silver, even though we don't use silver today, polishing the stainless. Could be laundry activities like sorting and folding. Uh, if the person has higher ability, let them uh, do the regular laundry. If the person has memory loss and some challenges, maybe they can fold washcloths, fold hand towels, small things that are similar and like. They could match socks. Maybe you have 12 pairs of socks, each in a different color. Find the socks, match them. Uh, change bed linens. Maybe they can only do the pillow. So find some things that relate to those tasks that that person had in their earlier years. Someone who was an accountant or a bookkeeper or worked in a bank may be able to uh, work with receipts. Save your receipts from the stores. I uh, Put those uh, into a box and ask the person to uh, calculate your receipts. That You might even find a ledger or green uh, ledger paper at the bookstore. You can use an old calculator. So that's giving them a purposeful task related to their profession. Teachers may enjoy reading uh, children's books. Uh, they may enjoy uh, looking at um, you know, teacher's materials that you can find even today at the dollar store, and they may even have some. People that were in the trades uh, may be able to uh, hold and touch items from their profession. Plumbers might use PVC pipe and elbows, and you can talk to them about plumbing issues. You may find that someone that worked with auto parts or was a mechanic or liked racing, you can have some uh, you know, uh, boxes that have some small items there. They can look at magazines, how to, you know, the handyman type books. So find something that relates to their um, sort of profession, if you will. Now, if someone was um, an attorney, and we, I've had a number of folks uh, in that profession over the years, often they may still like the Law Review, the Wall Street Journal, 
looking at law books. Now, we don't know what the level of comprehension may be, but it gives them that uh, sense of that purposeful work period of their day. Also in the mid-morning, we want to have a little bit of a rest break. It could also be a bathroom break, and you want to definitely have bathroom breaks all throughout the day. And it should be a snack break, a time for hydration, getting something to drink, and a time for a snack. So you want the energy snack, a fiber snack, a fresh fruit snack, and try to stay away from those sugar items. If you have, uh, during that time, somebody who, again, like to be outdoors, that's a great time to involve them in an outdoor activity. So it could be gardening, it could be a something, a building a birdhouse, it could be whatever it can be related to their um, experiences. For some women, again, who are homemakers, uh, taking care of children was important, taking care of babies. So you may find, and we do have here, some ladies who really like those lifelike baby dolls. You may have um, folks who uh, like to look at baby clothes. They want to look at uh, photo albums of the past when their children were much younger. So you'll know your relative, the person you're caring about, their interests, their abilities, their hobbies. Uh, carpenters can um, perhaps have sanding blocks with sandpaper. Again, think about their profession. So after we've come to the mid-morning and we've had a little uh, time in that uh, work sort of an activity. We've had a little time for a break and perhaps a snack. Now we're coming to the end of that mid-morning and we want to think about that next uh, hour block, if you will, before lunch is a time that the person may do something they particularly enjoy. And it could be for a lot of folks, uh, they like game shows. So game shows can be something you think about and it gives you that half hour, hour break to take care of something inside the house yourself or some time, some moments to yourself. It could be that this is a time that someone can watch their favorite TV programs. So if you have cable, uh, there are many, many of the old fashioned shows that are on there. And a lot of our residents enjoy everything from Westerns to I Love Lucy to the Waltons, you know, whatever their favorites were, that's a good time for that. If you don't have cable, there's Decades TV on the antenna channels and there's YouTube, there's Netflix. Everything today is accessible to you. So take that time to have that person relax watch a, a program that they enjoy. So if we're thinking about that schedule through the day, we've taken a look at you know um, brain involvement, brain engagement, interactions, inter, uh, and then physical movement. We've had snack time. Now we're talking about some pleasurable activities that really don't necessarily have to serve a, a big purpose. They're just enjoyable. Many of us know that when we're home from work in the evening, we wanna watch the ball game, our favorite TV shows, uh, that kind of thing. So it doesn't necessarily always serve a purpose. It's just relaxing and we enjoy it and it brings comfort. So the schedule that you're developing for this first day of the week may not be the schedule all seven days. You're going to vary it so that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday you do certain things, Tuesday and Thursday you do certain things, and trying to balance those uh, schedules uh, you know, throughout the, um, the week, if you will. Now, persons who didn't necessarily, and I forgot to mention, have a profession, you may find uh, that finding the activity for them can include things like jigsaw puzzles, word games, uh, word finding games, crossword puzzles, things that, again, uh, give our brain some uh, abilities for uh, engagement, if you will. So now, so we've kind of come through midday. We're watching the game show, our favorite programs. We're resting. If the person isn't a TV person, they may enjoy certain types of music. That's a great time for that. It could be that they like Bible study. That's also a time for that. And as we come up on the lunchtime, again, it's a time for a bathroom break. It's a time to have the loved one perhaps get involved in helping with meal preparation uh, and uh, setting the table, stirring, preparing. And depending on their ability, they may be actually able to help with the meal to a high degree. And for others, it may not be as high. Be aware of your dinnerware. You don't want to have too many utensils and too many uh, plates and glasses and cups in front of a person. So, you know, we know that uh, some people believe the color red will help stimulate appetite. So they'll use a red plate and maybe just a fork. Uh, they won't necessarily have all those other things at the table. You might want to serve, you know, the salad first, then the entree, then the dessert. We, uh, unlike in a restaurant where we sometimes have everything in front of us at the same time. You be the judge. Again, being careful of the types of foods we're serving. Don't load up on too many sugary items. After lunch, this next half hour, 45 minutes, whatever your time slots are that work for you, it's a great time for a short rest. So if the person is a napper, let them take a nap. Uh, that's again a time for you to uh, take care of an errand or get some time to yourself. 
what you don't want is for that person to go from the nap into a deep sleep because then we're going to have nights and days mixed up and you'll be interfering not only with their sleep hygiene but your own and you'll both be struggling to get good rest. What you may find is that during that rest time the person doesn't want a nap. They're not a napper. Well again that can be a time where they're going to do something a little more quiet. Uh, it could be that they're going to find enjoyment in looking at old photo albums, particular photos, listening to certain types of music, uh, you may find, and some people do, that the uh, music that is more like uh, soft sounds of nature is very relaxing for some. So you know what will help the person you're caring for find a little rest. So that's the time that for many people, the TV is not necessarily on. Uh, the lights aren't super bright. We don't have a lot of activity. We're trying to find a short rest time, if you will. So then around mid-afternoon, this is the time that begins what we think about as sundowning. From 3 p.m. to about 8 p.m., for many people of all ages, it's the most stressful time of day. Children were coming home from school. Uh, workers were getting ready to jump into traffic and get home. Mom was preparing meals. So young or old, it's definitely still the most stressful time of day. And with uh, individuals who may have memory loss, those are the times that we want to think about how we can structure uh, that afternoon time so that it's not uh, as stressful uh, and that could be again limiting television uh, limiting on uh, the opportunity for a lot of people to be running about it could be that you're going to help that person and get involved with something like um, favorite activities do they like to play cards do they like to do jigsaw puzzles are there some activities that can engage them in some tasks so that their mind is focused on the tasks that they'll be able to attend or focus on that activity and not be getting anxious just because of their habit of their lifetime that that was such a stressful time of day. So think about that. Are there certain things that you know they would find enjoyable and certain things um, that would uh, be stress triggers for them? And you wanna be aware of that. For some people, it may be just the time to sit in a rocking chair, relax. We have a lot of rocking chairs here at our Lantern Communities. It might be a time to hold hands, a time to just enjoy some quieter time yourself. It might also be a time that you're going to use technology. Use FaceTime, use uh, Skype, Zoom to stay in touch with friends and family around the, the globe, if you will, and say hello and keep uh, involved with your social contacts out there. Your social support network is going to be very important to you as a caregiver. So if you're isolated, especially during these times in your home, don't uh, let yourself become so isolated that you lose contact with others. Technology can help us do that. So now we're easing into mealtime. And as we said, uh, with mealtime, that's a great time for a bathroom break, making sure we're paying attention to hydration, getting that other person involved in uh, the meal prep and the cleanup afterward, if we can, to the degree that they can. And then after that, in the early evening, most of us have those routines. You know, we watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. We have favorite TV programs. We may enjoy another evening walk. We listen to certain types of music. So you'll get familiar and you probably already know what those types of activities are, the comforting ones in the early evening, and you'll use those. And you're beginning then to prepare for the sleep hygiene, the sleep patterns of your evening. Now, some people like to have a little uh, beverage bef uh, before they fall asleep. You don't want to have uh, anything with caffeine. So coffee is probably not a good idea. Some of the hot chocolates really don't have a lot of caffeine, you know, so you can look at those. Uh, you might find that uh, just having water works. Some people enjoy a glass of port wine. Uh, they may also find that certain beverages like a bourbon, a whiskey, a brandy are also sleep inducers or rest inducers. So if those are the patterns of that person in their earlier life, that may work for you now. And certainly you want to be mindful of medications that they take. And if they're not someone that uses alcohol, I certainly wouldn't want to interject it or introduce it at this time. But what you don't want to do is uh, become uh, dependent upon sleep aids. So you may be a person that will also find that you respond to sleepy time tea, chamomile tea, you may find that there are certain things like lavender that will work for you. So lavender on a pillow slip, lavender uh, in a natural oil that you can use, that helps many, many people. So that's up to you. If you have difficulties with the sleep patterns or you have problems with bathing time, giving a shower, getting a bath, whether it's morning or evening, those are very common concerns and issues for caregivers. 
and uh, actually they're a topic of their own and I hope we'll address that in a future uh, episode here. But the Alzheimer's Association has many, many materials that are very helpful and I'd be happy to help you get those. So check their website and if you have difficulty, uh, let me know, give me a call and I'm happy to help find those materials for you. They're little like tips and checklists that can help you with uh, the most difficult parts of the routine, which are usually bathing and grooming. So the type of prescription that you develop, it's really a type of schedule, is um, one that is predictable, one that looks at the time blocks of the day from early morning until early evening, where you're keeping that predictable routine, where you're using the person's uh, interests, personality, behaviors, work patterns uh, to incorporate something that uh, challenges them on many different levels. So cognitively, physically, socially, spiritually. So it's not just a random uh, here and there. So when you're developing that, you know, take into account that what is happening today may not be the same thing that you'll find that works for you uh, six months from now, a year from now, because of the level of memory loss you may be dealing with. So one of the things that I've developed and uh, that has helped me in my career and I often encourage families to do is to develop something that I call conversation starter kits. You can start with a shoebox or a plastic type shoebox from the dollar store and you create a themed kit. And the purpose of that kit is to have uh, items that relate to a common uh, theme, if you will, in each box. And that way it's not only a conversation starter for you, but if you have someone that's coming in to give you a break, you've got a family member visiting, a friend or neighbor that's going to give you a little break, it's a way for them to get something going. So I wanted to show you a couple that I developed. This first one, again, is a military box. So I took some things like plain replicas. I got these from the World War II Museum in New Orleans. But you can get a lot of these things even at the dollar store. You may have things like um, military hats. I have uh, one of these. You know, it's a, a cap pictures of someone that was in the military. I even have war stamps. I bought a lot of these things actually at uh, on eBay because I didn't have someone in my immediate family that had these things. You can even get replicas of the old war posters that are made into postcards. So those are easy. I even have here the uh, little tank that you see here. And so if somebody was in the military, they may recall certain vehicles, certain symbols, insignias. I actually went online and I bought the G.I. Joe. This is the uh, Navy G.I. Joe from years ago. I have the Army G.I. Joe. Uh, I have many of the books that were written during those times. I have patches, all kinds of things. Well, you don't have to be quite that elaborate. You can get some items that are uh, possibly in your house already. So let's say, as we were talking earlier about the homemaker, maybe we had somebody who was a baker. We can use the metal uh, measuring spoons and cups, an old pot holder, some handwritten recipes, some old spice bottles, you know, a hand uh, pastry blender, maybe a sifter, you know, uh, perhaps an old fashioned egg beater. I have a theme box on fishing. I have one on baseball. I have one on football where I've just gathered things that I had. I've asked my friends and family to help me with little things that they might have. And for instance, the baseball one might include a baseball, of course. It might have a box of Cracker Jacks a baseball program, a baseball cap. It could have some items from somebody in your family who's in Little League uh, or perhaps a little trophy. So you just add things on those different themes. I actually do have a handout that uh, helps you create 10 different conversation starter boxes. So if you'd like to have that, just reach out to me and uh, give me a call. My number is 440-557-1104. Just to show you another one, I'm only going to show you these two. This is one that I did about weddings. So I actually have this old-fashioned veil, and it's typical of a very long time ago. I have the beaded handbags that many brides carried with them. I have the tiaras. I went and got a ring case, and it has a cubic zirconia, but it looks like an engagement or wedding band. And that's my chance to be able to say, oh, your wedding band is beautiful. Tell me about your wedding. Did you have a handbag like this? This is a pretty veil. How about yours? I even have the white gloves here. I have the pearl necklaces, some other jewelry that was in my family. 
the old-fashioned hair brushes. I have another box like this that's called Out on the Town, and it's got a lot of that rhinestone that looks like diamond, evening in Paris bottle. So think of your own themes based on that individual that you're caring for and their personalities, and you'll be surprised what you can come up with. Having these little kits, it's easy to assemble. It's a great family project, actually. And for people who are asking how they can help you, it's a perfect way to give them an idea on, on how they can do that for you. So those are easy to do, something you can have on hand, and it gives you a little break if you have somebody coming to care for, you know, help you care, if you will. So I mentioned before having a support network is important. Uh, those people can easily then take a look at your prescription or your schedule that you've developed and kind of uh, fit in uh, to some of the slots that you've already created. So you're not then asking them, gee, uh, how can you help me? Or they may say, how can I help you? And you're struggling to come up with something they can do. When it's on a list, it's on a schedule, and it's a prescription, they're kind of probably going to have a little bit more comfort in getting started and, and helping you. So tonight we've talked a little bit about how to develop a prescription for activity engagement. And so if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Like I said, I will be happy to help you with additional handouts, supports, ideas. And we hope that you will uh, share this uh, performance, I will say, or episode, I should say, on our uh, Facebook tonight. Share it on your Facebook. We welcome any suggestions you have for other topics. We welcome any questions you have on anything that we've covered so far. We invite you tomorrow to be involved in the last day of our virtual online auction, which benefits the Alzheimer's Association Longest Day event. The winners will be announced on Saturday, which is actually the longest day to coincide with the uh, most amount of light during the year. So it's actually the longest day of sunlight. And we're actually up to over $1,100 right now. So we're really excited about that. We thank all of those of you who have donated and contributed and are bidding. So continue to bid. We hope that you'll continue to join us for future episodes of Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. We're a little bit late tonight, so we apologize. But we uh, always uh, record these. So in the future, if you miss one, you can always catch it uh, right afterward on Facebook. And now we are also adding them to our YouTube channel. So again, 